we live? Something's happening. Button has been pressed. Nothing's on the screen. Uh, yes, I think we're coming on live. Hello, coders. Welcome to Thursday, Thursday's live stream of uh, the How to Code Well PHP object orientated course. Sorry, I'm a bit late. I was making a cup of tea. Um, so first things first, I would like to apologize that I haven't put the last two streams on uh, YouTube. I promised I would do that yesterday. I just didn't get around to it. Um, in fact, last night I was working on a proposal for um, a, a course that I'm hoping to do for, pa for packed publishing. That will be my third course. It's a Python course. Can't give anything away because obviously it's in the the early the early um, proposal stage. Uh, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully, I can I can work on that and I can talk to discuss it uh, more later. Um, yeah, uh, that would be my third Python course. The second one I've done is the Python Clean Coding course. Uh, that is yet to be published. That's with the editors now, um, and uh, and they're they're obviously putting on their magic, doing the magic on 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 that. The first one was Python and microservices. Uh, all of these are linked in the uh, in the show notes uh, on the channel. But anyway, let's now move on to talk about the this project, this free code camp PHP object orientated project that I'm building. This is a framework, uh, and that framework doesn't include any tests, any and sorry, any libraries uh, apart from testing libraries. And this is something that we're going to be focusing on today testing because yesterday I mentioned uh, that I would like to get Xdebug working <coughs> against our PHP container um, and with Xdebug there's two things that you can uh, that I would like to achieve with it the first one is I would like to get code coverage uh, when I run my tests because I don't know what tests or what part of the project is untested what is fragile what is a project risk the second one is i would like at some point to actually use xdebug connect that with my ide here which is php storm to debug and step through the application as the application runs today though what we're going to do let me just set that to be online yeah it is online good it just hasn't updated um what I would like to do today, though, is I would like to focus on the code coverage. And I did last night put in, if I go to the code, where's the code here? In our Docker um, file here, I put in a Plex installation of Xdebug. I did say yesterday that this could take a little bit of time, but I was actually quite surprised at how quickly uh, this, this came in. Um, I think previously there was some issues with a version of Xdebug and a version of PHP, I can't remember, uh, but I, I remember having to faff around with the config a little bit. So, um, so we're installing it here using the Plex extension, and then we're enabling it here, um, Docker PHP um, extension enable, and then Xdebug after we do mcrypt, uh, and that's it in terms of installing the Xdebug on the Docker uh, image. <coughs> that's all we have to do. Um, and then what we do is in the docker compose file, if I bring it that way, we then create our uh, a PHP ini file. Um, and I just use the default ini file, which was the development ini file in um, user local etc PHP. It was php.ini hyphen uh, development, I think it was. So I just copied that and I put that into this directory up here. So we go up here to where are we php php.ini um so i put that in there and i'm i'm uh, bind mounting that directory or that that file php.ini into this which is in the container which is the user local bin etc php php.ini now the magic happens in here so if i click on the php ini right at the bottom this is what i've added so we're, we're creating um we're enabling it we're enabling um uh, remote and I've also been faffing about with connecting back and so forth with uh, the ports and the connect back and stuff I'm probably gonna have to add a lot more to this to get the PHP storm uh, working and I'll probably do that offline because that I do know does take a bit of faff um, 
to, to get right. So that's pretty much all we need to do uh, to get the standard installation of uh, Xdebug running and working against the Docker um, uh, Docker goodness. Now, one thing I must say is that we have now installed Xdebug into the container, into the Docker image, not on our host machine. Uh, right now, I'm on the host machine. If I did an ls here, we can see that uh, that is the um, all the file. <laughs> <coughs> all the files, and if I did a pwd, we can see that, in fact, we're this is my um, machine, my host machine, and then we're actually in free code camp php .oop. Uh, So we are definitely on my host machine. This is an iMac. So anything that we do that requires code coverage, anything that we do that requires xdebug, we have to do against the container. And what I've been doing previously is I've been running. Um, uh, codeception on the host machine, not in the container, which is a bad mistake anyway, uh, because if you do that, then you're testing against your local installation of PHP and not the installation of PHP in the container. This can also trip you up when you're using Composer. So when you're installing Composer, it's going to be checking for your extensions and your PHP version rather than that of the container. So that is something that we we must now change our working habits to do any command to do with PHP, PHP stan, or uh, codeception against the container and not the host machine. <coughs> um, which does make life a little bit more tricky because we are having to, um, to, to run commands against the container. And we do that through Docker Compose. That is what I'm gonna show you in just a second. So um, we're using Codeception here, as I've mentioned, uh, but you don't need to use Codeception. You could just use PHP unit for this. Um, this is the, uh, where, was it? where are we? I'll show you the Codeception, um, Codeception.yaml, that's in the root directory. Um, what I've done is, I, is I've enabled coverage and I've said to include everything in the SRC. Now this this is super important, the include part, because I was playing around with this last night and and none of this worked. None of this worked until I put in what to include. Um, in fact, I got code coverage back, but the coverage said that I had covered no code and that's because I didn't tell it what to include. So, and and, and I couldn't actually see this part in the documentation. Uh, so I, I, it was a bit of trial and error. So if you've got a problem with your coverage with Codeception, make sure you have your include set. Uh, you can also do an exclude as well. So if there's a directory within the SRC and you want to exclude it, you can exclude that too. But we won't worry about that. That's, that's no problem. And the output of all of this goes into um, testing and then underscore output. So this is the Codeception output. If we open that up, we can see that it's just an empty uh, git keep and git ignore. Um, stuff. So this is going to be populated with our our code coverage reports when we do that. And let's just let's just fire one off. Let's just see if we can get that running. So I'm going to do uh, first of all. I'm just grab a cup of drink of my tea. Otherwise, this will go cold. Hang on. <clears throat> there we go. Um, so let's see if we can get this running. So let's do. Um, I'll, I'll, I did this last night, so it should be in my my history. So if I did a reverse search and it is docker compose and then it is uh, da, 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 e, no, no, I don't have it on my history. Marvelous. Okay, I'm going to have to do it manually. Docker compose and then it is uh, ba, 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 e, x, e, c, <laughs> now, I can't, now I can't remember. Let's just get into the container. It was web and we're going in this bash. Um, okay, so we're in the container itself. Um, and the command is vendor bin codeception, right? Uh, and then we need to give it a bunch of options. So I'm just going to do hyphen hyphen help and I'm going to see what those options are. Uh, it's obviously not that. It's run unit hyphen hyphen help there we go okay let's bring that up give a little bit of room so we're looking for the coverage stuff which is all of this goodness um 
<coughs> so uh, coverage we can do as HTML, we can do as text, we can do XML, um, we can do other bits and pieces, passing in um, uh, CRAP-J, CRAP-4J, which is um, uh, another little handy tool um, to report on um, uh, code messiness, I believe it is, which is, which is good. But let me, I'm just going to have to throw up a browser and just have a look at some, um, have a look at the command because I have forgotten totally what this command is. It is uh, codeception and we're looking for, I tell you what, I can do this on our browser. Let's have a look at that. Homepage and it was codeception. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. That is the wrong one. Codeception. Bear with me, guys. Just a second whilst I have a look at where this documentation is. Co <laughs> Come on. Codeception coverage. That's what I'm looking for. Coverage. I can't remember. There we go. Okay, so let's... Uh, can you see that? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so um, this is the code coverage. It's saying that we need these drivers, um, uh, xdebug or phpdbg. I've never used that, or, or pconf. <coughs> but this is the output we, we will expect to see, this, this thing here, uh, this nice little table. Um, this is the documentation that I used, and there is that include there, but it doesn't sort of explicitly say that this, is, this needs to happen. Um, but anyway, you know, the documentation is fantastic. I love it. This is what we need. This is what we need. I'm going to copy that because uh, this is saying that we want coverage and we want it in XML and we want it in HTML as well. Um, that is what we need. And as it mentions here, it goes into test output coverage. Marvelous. Okay, so let's copy that. Put that into the old uh, clipboard. Let's go back to the code and let's start playing around. Let's uh, clear that down. Um, so, I, you know, I have to do it in the container or against the container. I'm going to do it against the container. So we're going to come out of this container. And we're just going to go do Docker Compose EXE Web, because Web is the container name. And we're going to run vendor bin. Um, bear with me a minute. Have I? Yes, vendor has an O. <laughs> bin uh, code sep and then we're going to run the unit we're going to just run on units and then we're going to run that um, against this okay so that's the that's the command that i'm going to run and if we keep an eye on this output folder here let's run that okay so it's going to do all of these things and then it gives us this fancy pants um, output and this output goes through each one of the uh, classes that it's found within that includes folder within um, the SRC here um, <clears throat> and it's going to check all the methods and it's going to check all the lines and it's going to check all the other bits and pieces as well um, it's going to give us a nice little printout here of all the things so like this for example the factory uh, the, we've only done 50% of the methods um, we're at 70% of the lines, okay? Um, so then we scroll up to the top and you can see this nice lovely output here. Um, the, the normal output, of, of course, is that uh, we have 42 tests, 56 assertions. Um, gives us a time. This is what it usually does. Notice that we're now on um, three seconds rather than like, I think it was like half a second. This is because um, we're using xdebug. xdebug does unfortunately slow down the, the, the whole process because it's having to do a lot of clever magic behind, in, you know, in the background. <clears throat> and, um, uh, but that you know that's 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 a, that's a happy trade-off. I think that's that's fine. So let's scroll down. We can see that we have a code coverage report now. When I didn't have the include in here, this code coverage report was just saying zero percent um, and zero found. So you know having the include is important. So we can see a nice little summary here. We've got classes. We got we've done forty-five percent of the classes, which I you know is not so bad. Sixty-two percent of the um, of the methods and uh, forty. Uh, Fifty-four percent of the lines. Fine. Okay, that's that. That is a nice little uh, feedback loop, which is good. But 
uh, check this out. If we now have a look at our output folder here, we can see that uh, we now not only have the git keep and git ignore stuff that was in here by standard, we also have um, this XML file serialized. At <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, and we have a coverage. So if we open that up, we can see that we have a whole bunch of HTML, um, a whole bunch of folders as well. Uh, these are all the uh, obviously the namespaces and the and the stuff that we've uh, put in. But if I was, <coughs> oh gosh, sorry, if I was to click on dashboard, um, let's open that up. Hopefully, I've got this working on uh, PHP Storm. If I click on Chrome. Is that going to bring that up? Yes, it will. So let's open up the browser. This is the dashboard. Um, it's a little small on the screen. I do apologize. But this gives us um, a nice graph or set of graphs about um, what we've covered, the project risks here, yeah, and the in insufficient code coverage there. We have um, some, some complexity as well. Um, and we've got a nice boiled down, you know, things that have insufficient coverage, things that have project risks. Um, you know, this is the, the how complex these things are. In fact, 12 isn't that bad, I, I don't think. Uh, but, you know, we, you, you, you now immediately have a way of, of identifying where in your code it lacks coverage, what might be breaking. And if you have any bugs that you come through and you get, it's, it's good to know where the, the weak points are. So if you have a bug and you go, well, this piece of code isn't, isn't, isn't tested, so it might actually be coming from that piece of code. But that's not the only thing we've got. If I go back to the um, uh, coder, co code thing here, the, the actual code, <laughs> click on the index. If I open up the index file, if I do the same little uh, chromey magic, open that up in another tab. Let's go back to the browser here, uh, we can actually see a nice drill down, um, uh, I guess you would call, uh, it is a, it's not a graph, it's sort of like a, I'm just going to say a chart, a nice little chart of all of the things that have been uh, covered, and we go through a series of lines, the functions and methods, the classes and traits, and here we can see very, very quickly uh, that we've got, um, we've covered more in, in the helper. Uh, than anything else. In fact, we haven't done anything in anything else. Uh, we've only been working in in the helper. And if I can click if uh, click into there, uh, we can then drill down into that folder, and we can actually find the specific drill down to those specific details. So this is uh, this is the HTTP folder. So we haven't tested anything in the kernel. Um, let's click on that. We can see that um, we haven't done anything for the response. We have. Um, barely anything for the request. Oh, well, well, we've got 66% for the request. Um, we are covering 90% of the functions, so yeah, we are doing a bit. Um, but the brilliant thing is if I click on the validation here, uh, we can see, if I click on validation.php, um, we can actually see the file. This is super, super useful. Um, so we have, uh, this is the actual output of the file, and all the green things here, all the green lines, are, are things that the xdebug actually, you know, touched upon when you were running those unit tests. So we know that this code it has been tested. We know that this code has been tested. We know that this code has been tested. This code, however, hasn't been tested at all, all right? So this is the risky part within this um, within this code. So the, the validate function hasn't been tested. So if, if, um, if I wanted to write some tests and I didn't know where the tests were and where the tests weren't, I would use a tool like this and to go, okay, I'm going to now validate, uh, test the validate routine. Um, so let's go back uh, a couple of steps. <coughs> and this is a great little feedback cycle. So you, you do a test, you run this code coverage. You saw it only took about three seconds, and then you, you know, you have a look and another look at these, uh, these these charts and go, well, okay, that that's more tested. I'm a little bit more confident. So, I have zero confidence in the response because that hasn't been tested um, in terms of like code uh, quality. I know it works because you know I've, I've pressed the refresh button on the page and I've done a smoke test, so I know it works. But I don't know. Um, I don't know like. It, 
if it works or not from from a from a unit tester's perspective um, and it also shows me that I haven't done any TDD on this on response um, which is which is not good you can use these breadcrumbs to go forward and back by the way and then you can hit the dashboard to take you back to the dashboard um, the dashboard is super super useful <coughs> Um, because you can, you know, you can just see what has insufficient uh, coverage. So if you're, if you've got like a Friday afternoon and you you want to do a little bit of um, uh, tidy up work, maybe it's sort of like you know that period of between sort of Christmas and and New Year or or um, sort of like December time where nothing actually goes out because you've got a feature freeze. You could you could use that a time as an opportunity to evaluate and audit your own code using tools like um, uh, xdebug and uh, co coverage um, and you can you know you can you can you can make your code a little bit more better it also highlights the areas that um, need to be refactored because what I would do is say okay um, this has insuffic insufficient coverage here um, let's let's do the um, the factory and I might go well actually this is quite difficult to uh, to test, so I might have to refactor this to make it more testable, um, perhaps. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a super super useful thing. What we're going to do is just w today we're just going to pick out a couple of things. We're going to run some tests, and we're going to you know have this as a feedback cycle. There's projects that I've used this on, and I know I'm getting a little bit excited here, but I do think that this is this is fantastic. I do, I would like you know I I, I recommend this to to PHP developers. Um, uh, because, you know, just because information is power. Uh, and as I said yesterday, I was not in any position to know what had been tested and what hadn't been tested. I know I had 42 tests, but I just didn't know what, what that number meant in relation to the amount of code that I had yet to test. Uh, so here I can immediately see those, those um, pain points. Um, and also what I've done in some previous clients work is uh, where we use um, <clears throat> continual um, continual integration uh, where we're, we're, we're continually integrating into the code base and then even when we move into say uh, continual delivery um, or, or deployment um, this gets hooked into say Jenkins um, so Jenkins runs the tests using coverage and then we have a report based on every build um, and we can see where the tests have been added, where the tests haven't been added, uh, what features have been pushed through with 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 hardly any tests, um, and this is a good indication before it even gets deployed to know how robust and stable uh, something is. So yeah. Anyway, let's get on and actually write some code today. So I'm just going to grab some more tea because I've been speaking loads. So okay, let's take a look at let, let's take a I tell you what let's let's go back to um, uh, d -d 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 let's let's just go through uh, this for a minute. I'm just going to close those tabs down. Don't need those. Okay, so let's just pick on something, shall we? Let's just pick on something. Let's go to helper. Let's go to um, HTTP request. Um, factory type server factory so that's that's what we were excuse me that's what we were playing with uh, or I, I showed before let's see if we can write a test to test this so this is a public static function we pass in a, a, a query string and a method that gets added to the request um, uh, instance when we instantiate that we then double check whether or not we have the request URI and the request uh, exception um, request method sorry if we don't we throw an exception <clears throat> so there, there's there's multiple paths in here um, first of all we need to make sure well there's there's three tests that I can immediately see the first one is that we want to make sure that we return a request uh, based upon a, a successful um, call to this um, so we must have the request URI and we must have the request method, okay, in this in the server variables. So somehow we would need to manipulate codeception, a codeception test or a PHP unit test, to have these server variables in there. 
um, which might be a little bit tricky. Um, and then we and then we need to test that these exceptions are actually coming back when one of these or both of these don't actually have um, have that server thing. So this is actually quite a difficult thing to test. Usually what happens is that people go, oh, this is a difficult thing to test, so I'm not going to test this. I'm going to test something else. Now, I know that in order to get this to work, um, I need to, <coughs> excuse me, I need to um, force these server variables. I'm not sure if I can do that, but I will, I will give it a whirl. So let's go to the code. I don't think this is going to work, but let's just give it a go anyway. So we'll come out of all of this. We'll go into uh, the unit here. Bring that out a little bit. Helper, HTTP, um, and where are we? We are in uh, request factory type. So we are in request. I'm going to give a new folder called factory and another folder here called type. And this is called the server factory. So we're going to just copy request.test into here. And we're going to call this server factory. And yes, I will add it. OK, so here we go. Let's uh, start this up. So let's hit server factory test. Um, we'll just do the first one first. Now, I know that we don't have the, um, the little library to test to show that we have the exception because you need to install a library, a little small library, for uh, the assertion of an exception. Um, it's not very easy to test an exception in Codeception um, <clears throat> without it. So let's just do request, and then this is uh, server factory. We're going to test the default, so we're going to do new server factory um, however this yeah new server factory um, there is no constructor but we could do this so we could do factory is equal to a new instance of server factory and then factory uh, make okay so make will throw an exception if the server variables aren't installed. <coughs> uh, um, so let's see if we can actually get those server variables in. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let's try it. I need to put in this one here. And I need to put in this one here. is equal to get. Okay, so then that, that makes that and it returns a request. So we go request is equal to this. So the test is that we have the request coming back from the factory that we've just created. So we can do assert instance, whoa, 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 instance of this. Um, let me see, I can't remember. Is it... Um, Expected and then actual. Yeah, it's always that right way round. <clears throat> so expected is the request class. And that is what we've got. Okay, so what we could do is we could just run against the request. We could use the group and we could just run that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the whole thing uh, again. Let's see if anything breaks. 43. No, <coughs> it's all passed. It's all good. It's all gravy. Um, so that, that works good. So let's go back to the browser. I'll refresh this here. And now we've got it's all gone green. Now, or, or the majority of it's gone green. Now, th we can see here that we haven't actually checked whether or not um, the exceptions have been thrown because we haven't, we haven't gone into this, um, this path. Um, so we have f made sure that there is a, an instance, uh, sorry, a um, 
the server variable request URI is set. Um, if we were to throw an, uh, an exception, uh, so if, if this wasn't set, for example, it would throw an exception and the test would fail um, because it's throwing an exception. Tests shouldn't throw exceptions. Unless, of course, that you are testing for an exception. Oops. And it's that library that I need to include. Um, so let's, I'll just, I'll just demonstrate. So that's throwing the, uh, doing the testing of the default. So we can see uh, test URI exception. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just not going to set that. Okay. And I'm just going to run this and we're going to run make and hit save. This is going to throw an exception. There we go. You may have just quickly seen that. Let's just drag that up. So yeah, we've, this here is we fa we failed and we can see that we have one failure. We still get the coverage report because, you know, just because we've one, one test has failed doesn't mean that we have to fail the whole thing. And this is the exception request URI not found. Now that is actually a valid, uh, a valid, um, response, but because we're throwing an exception in PHP, uh, the test fails. So we need to add that test, add that check. I'm going to just quickly see uh, how I how I go about doing that. Oh, sorry, I didn't actually show you that. This is <laughs> I keep getting ahead of myself. This is the request URI. This is what I've just put in here. So we have server. We've removed. We've removed this from here. I've created a new new test, and we've ran that without the server request URI, right? And that then get throws us, us an exception, request URI is not found, which is actually the code that we, we've um, written here, request URI is not found. So this is actually, in theory, a passing test. However, because we've thrown an exception in PHP, it's failed the test. So we need to, um, there is a library that I need to include to uh, allow for exceptions. Um, or test for exceptions. I'm just going to have a little noodle and have a look and see uh, if I can quickly do that in this stream. <coughs> um, so code, exception, throw. Throw exception. Asserts, there is handles, checks, throwables. Or, mm. Ex oh, there is, um, sorry, there is an expect exception. That could work. Handles and checks exception uh, called inside the callback, either uh, exception or class name or instance. So that <clears throat> you could actually accept that. I thought I needed a library in order to do that. Uh, oh. That's using I. I'm not sure we've got I on here. Have we got I? No, we've got this. Um, can I do this? Oh, we can do this. Ex except, ex except, 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 exception. <laughs> so, what I'm looking at here is the 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 documentation. So this is the. Um, thing that we need to do. We need to do it within the callback. Uh, so we run the test within the, within this. I'm just going to copy that for, for uh, clarity's sake. Um, go into the, and that's pretty handy because it checks. It also checks for the, um, with a message as well. That's pretty handy as well. Let's copy that. Let's go back into, uh, the brat, the, the, where am I? The code. That's what I need to do. I need to write code. So <clears throat> we don't have I, we've got this because um, we're using a test. And so that can go. Um, and the exception is new exception. It's just a standard exception. Um, <clears throat> and we're passing in, I think, if I go back to 
Where are we? I don't know. It is in too many windows open. Too many windows open. Is it in here? There we go. Yeah, that is what we want to copy. That's the exception message that we want. So we go back to the to the coder, um, and we check for that. <clears throat> Obviously not without those things. Um, so we accept the accept exception. Uh, we're doing it in a callback, which means that we need to actually run the code uh, within here. Um, and uh, we don't need to um, check. We don't need to ask for the <coughs> for the um, request because you know we are hoping that it will throw an exception. Um, we can remove that comment as well. Okay, so we're expecting an exception. Did that throw an error there? Method call uses two parameters, but method signature uses one. Uh, maybe this won't work. <laughs> maybe that won't work. Okay, let's just try it anyway, because that's throwing up a, a, a nasty little message. Method call uses two parameters, but method signature uses one. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have the callback. We've got accept. Oh dear, this might be. This might be the issue here. I'm, I'm now looking in the co the the code for codeception. Yeah, I might not be able to do this. <laughs> I might not be able to do this uh, without that library, that cheeky little library that I I, I thought I needed. Let me, because this is that that's just going to throw a throw a nasty. I think. Um, <clears throat> where is the tests unit request tests factory type server type there we go <clears throat> yeah so that's not going to work that's a shame do I have I I have tester let's have a look does tester have it so this is um, this tester we have uh, yeah we do we have accept exception and we pass in the callback so uh, yeah there, there we go let's try that instead that's looking a little bit more healthy um, although we have oh yeah qualifier is unnecessary we can just fix that just tidy that up now I was speaking to a colleague um, a while back about tidying up these little things because uh, you can see the qualifier is unnecessary um, <coughs> I like to do this because I whenever I'm using PHP storm I like these visual signals that to me tell me whether things are gonna break uh, and, and whatever it also in my opinion makes the code a little cleaner but can you see that 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 little thing there has now turned from yellow to, to green indicating that that is 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 now acceptable in the eyes of PHP storm um, whereas if I clicked on this thing here uh, we can see that this uh, is going to throw an exception and I'm not testing for it so I, I use these sort of visual signals to, to just make it a little bit cleaner I would rather see errors where errors are errors right so I would like to clean the code up make the code a little bit more presentable um, before I then take a look at the um, where the error could possibly be anyway let's see if we can run this um, and see what happens so they all passed that's uh, that's pretty good uh, I think <laughs> let me have a look yep if we uh, go to the browser and refresh the page, we can see that that's now cleared. We've now tested for that case. So let's now test for this case. So we, we need to do the same thing. We go back to the coder um, and we pass that in. Let's go up to here. Now, 
Now I thought, and I do apologize, uh, I, I thought that I needed to install a library in order to get the this exception, but perhaps they've updated Codeception since I've used it last, or since I've installed it last, um, uh, which is going to, which is awesome because that you know that's a that's the one library I don't need. So request server factory URI exception. This we're going to te well that was testing not the URI that was actually testing the um, no that was testing the URI sorry. Uh, this one we're going to test the method. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to we're going to have the uh, the your request URI, but we're not going to have a method. Get uh, so that's going to just be a slash. And that should say method. Let's hit save. Let's run this. 45 tests now. They all passed. Let's go back to the browser, refresh this old page. We can see now that we have tested every single line. We've gone through each of these paths. Um, you know, we've done, checked for that exception. We've checked for this exception. Um, however, however, we haven't, just because this is 100% code coverage on this file does not mean that this does not have any bugs because it depends, of course, on how this is inter integrated into the code. For example, we might have something in the code that runs this, but requ but ex expects that we have a request method exception, not a request URI method, and we might forget to put in the request URI, right? Um, so don't. What I'm trying to say is that just because your code coverage is a hundred percent does not mean for any sort of, you know, don't don't. Don't suddenly think that because your code coverage is 100% doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% uh, bug free because, you know, you're only testing it as well as you're writing your unit tests. Um, it's how that code gets implemented and, uh, you know, it, you, have to, you have to test all the paths and everything that, that go through this. But <coughs> um, let me drink some more. But if I if I clicked um, come out of this, if I now go to request, we can see that the request is now a full one hundred percent. So in HTTP, we can see that we have completed that, yay! And we've completed this um, validation and locator needs a bit of work, um, and but the response is is just completely untested at all. Uh, so out of this, this would response would be the the weakest point. Um, and of course, <coughs> when you get a bug, um, then you would write a test for it uh, using unit tests or acceptance tests or what have you, uh, and then you would you would um, you would group you would put a group um, on the PHP document and then run that singly to make sure that that is working. Now, you know there, there are several occasions where I've seen code where it's you know. It, it, Part of the code is 100% code covered, covered, but there has been bugs and bugs, lots of bugs in that. And so what we do, what what we've done is we've created multiple unit tests against the same thing, but passing in different values, um, just to you know ensure that those things work. For example, um, let's take a look at I, something I did the other day. It was in uh, uh, was it in locator? Nope. Was it in URI? There we go. The URI builder. Okay, so we've got this at 100%. But what happens if we pass in crazy stuff, right? We we Just because we've passed in a, a URI, a, an actual string that has something in it, doesn't mean that this is going to work if we pass in an empty string. Do, do you know what I mean? You've got you've, you've to uh, test all the eventualities. Um, so code coverage is a very weird sort of metric because yes, it boosts your confidence up in the code, but it does somehow sometimes give you one of these sort of like 
uh, sort of a misconception that your code is foolproof and bulletproof. Um, and that really isn't the case. Um, so really only use code coverage, in my opinion, as a, as a, as a way of identifying the areas in your code that hasn't been covered. Don't worry too much about all the things that have been covered because that's, you know, if they've been covered, great, fine. But worry about the areas that haven't been covered. And in my experience, when I look at this, um, I will, tr you know, it's just a failing of humans, right? We will look for the simplest things to fix first. And so what usually happens is the last um, 30, 20, 10% of the coverage is actually the very difficult stuff, the stuff that you have to refactor and change in order to um, in order to make it testable. Um, so yes, your code coverage could be like you know seventy percent, great, fantastic, but the last thirty percent could be an absolute pain to test, and it could be the legacy stuff, the stuff that is really sort of like a black box of, of tricks. Um, so so don't just think, oh, you know, because I've tested the, the first 70% in, in, in this amount of time, I can then, you know, test the, the rest, the 30% in a shorter amount of time. That's not the case. So, you know, it's certainly not the case in my experience, at least. Um, okay, let's uh, let's go back to the browser here. Sorry, go back to the code. <coughs> um, PHP Storm will have to re-index every time we do this because we're actually having to run this in um, in the output. So this 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 gets changed all the time. Uh, I just want to go back to I think it was the dashboard. Uh, is it the dashboard? Yeah, I want to go back to the dashboard. So I'm going to have to go into here and then open that up as a tab. Go into into the browser. Um, So that project risk now has disappeared um, for the uh, for the, the the server factory that that has now gone because it you know it it is it is tested. However, the word risk does does bring a little bit of um, misconception to it because just because that's tested doesn't mean it's no longer a risk. It's less of a risk, sure, um, or it's it yeah it's. It's less, yeah, whatever. <coughs> um, so let's pick on another one. Let's pick on another one. Uh, let's take a look at something that is really, really complex or really, really uh, hasn't got much coverage at all. Um, so we have all these fine buys and stuff. We're not worried too much about the fine buys in this stage because we're not dealing with the ORM yet. Uh, boot hasn't got anything against it. Um, you know, that's fairly important. Uh, make roots doesn't have anything. None of these have anything. This is all insufficient. Um, index set date updated. So that's fine. Let's pick on ones that are to do with the routing. So let's pick on... Uh, let's pick on make roots. <clears throat> okay. So we can see in here, we, this is the only thing that has not been tested in this file. This is uh, uh, the root factory. I'm passing in the roots, and we should get an array of roots. Okay, so how do we test this? Well, this is also using the add root, this add root up here. Uh, sorry, uh, down here. <laughs> Beg your pardon. So we pass in an array. Uh, that loops over the array and then adds the data. So there's no check here, I don't think, that all of these are set. I think the validation is done at a different level, um, but we, we, you know, we, we should m ensure that, that that unit of work works as expected and as it doesn't expect. So let's go back to the code. This, um, hang on, let's just say, this is uh, root factory. So let's go back to the code a minute. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 root factory, we are in tests, uh, unit, helper, 
HTTP, uh, root, factory test, um, and testing the make root, which is add root, uh, test make multiple. So, okay, we're just using the add root, fine. Okay, so we need to uh, do a similar thing to the make multiple, but to the app, to the set. So let's copy that, <clears throat> bung that in there. It is test make roots. <coughs> so we uh, have a new instance of the factory. Um, yeah, that's fine. Instance of the factory, we set the uh, uh, results here. Um, and then we loop over the roots and we add a root. But this case, we wanted to just to do um, factory make roots passing in the roots. And root that and that returns an array. So the first thing we need to do, so let's just do um, result, results. First thing we need to do is make sure that this is actually returning an array. So let's do um, this assert uh, uh, is array. Is that right? Is array, yep, <clears throat> of results. Um, then what I would like to do is count the results uh, based against the count of the roots, like so. <coughs> so let's hit save on that. Um, let's run the code coverage again. Do do do, we're now on 46. They all passed. Let's go back to the browser. Refresh this page. And yep, that's all green. So that's, that's working. Excellent. Now, one could argue that we're not actually checking um, that uh, options actually have uh, these arguments. So we might, one could argue that we might have to write some sort of if, uh, if instance of, or if, if a failure of that is set, isn't set, I should say, sorry. If that isn't set, then we throw an exception. So we would throw an exception one, two, three, four, possibly five times. That means that we have five different tests that we need to write because we have five different pathways or additional pathways in, you know, into this code. So this is a great way of sort of analyzing your code and auditing your code. Um, I find it super, super useful. Um, something I mentioned in my Python clean coding course, which is um, yet to be soon to be released, is that we read code far more than we write code. Um, and, and I guess today that th th this is a great example of that because we've been reading code through this this interface here um, and then we've been testing the code that hasn't been tested, that we've read that hasn't been tested. Um, and also a point that I made in that course is that when we, when you come across a bug, when a bug comes in, not only are you reading, not only are you reading the code that you're writing to fix that bug, but you're also reading the code around the code that could influence that bug um, so we do we do read far more than we write um, so uh, you know and tools like this just give you that that power so here I can see that all of this is passing apart from the validator.php um, and here we've got we've got different pathways again so we've got is valid is false we loop over the roots we then validate those roots so this is more sort of like we're checking the integration here between uh, the validate uh, and and the roots itself um then we return a, a false so i i i mean here right um we we're, we're saying that this is an array of roots but we don't we're not we're not we're not explicitly saying what that array needs to consist of we're then handing off the root to the validate routine um so and, and i think the validate routine requires 
that that is a, a root. I think that is in the, the, the data type. However, from this perspective, we, there's no check. This could just have an array of, you know, fruit or Marvel characters. Um, so the validate routine um, would validate that and then throw an exception, which we're doing here. So if uh, that isn't uh, valid, then we throw the exception and we get the class. Um, but, you know, th this, could, this could throw an issue here because what if that isn't a class of root? So that isn't valid. And therefore we get that, um, th this thing actually throws an exception because we can't find a class because root is actually just a string where it, where it just says apples or, you know, um, Iron Man or something. Uh, luckily though with PHP um, 7, we, we now have the, the ability to have data types, which is fantastic. Um, so I do believe that the validate routine requires the root to be the data type of the class root, um, which is good. If we were working in the old PHP five days, which uh, is, <laughs> I am working on a project at the moment, which is PHP five, um, this would be a major concern because we, we don't have that data type, which means that roots could be apples, oranges, pears. And so this thing here, I mean, that would throw a false and then this would be we would throw an exception and then we would throw another exception because this exception can't be can't be fulfilled because we can't get the class of root because root is not a class it's actually apples um you see what i mean it's sort of like <coughs> it's a good way of sort of like really narrowing down focusing on a piece of code and you can actually sort of like look at the 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 pinch points of this now, one could argue that we should check that we have an instance of root before we actually pass it to the validate routine. Um, one could argue that because we're not doing that, we are actually being lazy because we are requiring the validate to valid to to have that data type. Just because PHP seven does have data types in in parameters doesn't mean that you can you you have to use them. There's no enforcement here um, in PHP seven. <laughs> Nobody's saying that uh, you, you don't have to use them. And so we're relying on the fact that there is that. So yeah, one could argue that we need to we need to have a, a an, an instance check on root at this point and then throw an exception if that root isn't an instance of root uh, before we get to the validation routine. One could argue that validate doesn't need to have a data type, but does do that check within the validate routine and therefore you're validating everything that goes in, not just at this point. Um, it's a, uh, it's an interesting, um, you know, it's an interesting thing with programming. I think that with PHP is growing up, um, where you know it, it's, uh, it's, it's much better than it was. I mean, it was it's a fantastic language. I've been a, pro, a PHP developer for nearly twenty years, and um, not 20 years that no, no that's too long <laughs> over over half over a decade and a half uh let's just say and um yeah that would have caught me out uh right at the start when i was passing in various different pieces of of, of arrays so uh yeah anyway anyway i've spoken a load my poor throat is is um f falling apart The tea is getting rather cold, uh, so I'm gonna. I've got some bits and pieces that I need to do before um, before I actually have to uh, open up the Jira tickets. But um, what I'm going to uh, do tomorrow, I'm gonna come back on on the stream tomorrow, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit more testing. I think it's always good to to do that. I'm not going to aim for 100% code coverage because I think that. Um, you know we don't we don't need to do that um it would be nice it would be certainly nice to get it up to at least um 70 maybe even 80 percent so that would be that would be pretty cool but what i would like to do now is i would like to switch gears um and i would like to focus on the orm um so if i go back to the code i would like to focus on at some point so 
coming out of the HTTP stuff, I would like to work on in SRC uh, things like the repositories, things like the entities, uh, and actually start working through the the intricate issues of what an invoice application requires and needs in terms of the data. Um, but that's where I want to get to. But there is a pathway to do that before I, I, I need to walk before that happens. There is um, there is an, an acceptance test issue. Uh, so if I did this without coverage for now, I just hit run. So we've got two failures. The, the, the failures are of the acceptance tests. <coughs> and this is where we, we're not having our error document. There is still that issue. So I would like to get all the unit tests that I have created and the acceptance tests passing before I attack another component of this code. Um, so what I would like to do, I'll probably do it offline because I'm still scratching my head as to why this isn't working. Uh, try and f solve this. I'll try and do this tonight. And then hopefully tomorrow I'll, I'll come back um, on the stream with a solution. Um, what I would like to do at least uh, today is I would like to, to merge this branch into develop. And then once all of the acceptance tests and the unit tests are working, all the unit tests are working, so it's just acceptance tests, just these two tests, I will then merge this into master because then that will be my level of sort of like my, my benchmark, if you will. Um, benchmark 51 tests will all be passing um, and it would be quote unquote stable. Uh, and then at that point, I would like to then move on to uh, to the to the to the ORM to the repositories to the entities. And we'll probably focus first on the entities, build those out. Um, that will also mean that um, we'll need to wire up MySQL, uh, MySQL, for the. Um, it, it, you know, in, in, in the Docker Compose stuff. At the moment, it's not working. So I will have to fix that. Um, we'll create the entities. We'll get the entities working. Um, we'll wire those up. We'll create some tests for it. Then what we'll do is we'll c connect to um, the database. Uh, and then we'll write the repositories, which have the um, the the finds, find buys, uh, find ones and saves and so forth. We'll start filling all those out. Um, and then once that works, so we are quite a far way off, I would then focus on the controllers um, and actually get some pages working uh, based on the various IDs that we pass through. So we might have like an in-between sort of ser almost like a service um, where we call upon the service based upon the ID that we passed in here. Um, that service then hydrates a, uh, an invoice entity based upon the result of the repository that we've, uh, that we've queried. So this would be fine one by, we pass the ID in here. That would run the query, um, pass that back to the manager. The manager would then pass that back to the controller. The controller will then do something with that and then pass that back to the uh, the view um, and we then at that point we then have the uh, the whole request response shebang working and then I can then once we have all of those pieces in the jigsaw puzzle put together we can then start building out forms and various other bits and pieces for the invoicing application but anyway I need to dive off happy coding everyone um, and I will see you again same time tomorrow morning. Cheers. Bye-bye.